Good morning. Welcome to Money Matters. Dan Locke, I have been traveling around the country mm. to find the greatest influencers, business minds to help our audience because you're on Money Matters. And, and once in a while, it matters. And maybe Money all matters. the time. So maybe all the time it does. And uh, and I've known your work for the last several years. I've watched tons of videos of yours. Uh, your, your story is always, I think there's a reason you've got a million plus followers on Instagram and millions and millions on YouTube. And you've risen really kind of the top as someone that uh, Americans and business look to mm. at, at the forefront of your industry. And I, and I think I wanted, and, I, and, and the, the reason how we linked up to, to do this interview, and I heard about your book that's coming out, Unlock yes. It. Yes, And it's about, it's about finance, and it's about wealth, and yes. it's about creating success. And it's also about significance. Significance. Yes. It is about significance. Yes. Um, but first, let me say, Wes, well, I'm very honored, I'm humble, right, that you follow my work. Not in a million years could I ever imagine I would be doing what I'm doing today being on your show, traveling the world, impacting millions of people, doing what I do, because as you know my background, right? So I, I was born yeah, let's, in Hong Kong. Yeah, give us our, our audience yeah. your background. So I was born in Hong Kong. Yes. So I came to North America with no money, no connections, not a when word. When you were 14, 14 years old, 14 not years a old. word of the Eng English language on my lips, yeah. right? So 14 years old, going through school, and then my mom and dad got divorced when I was 16 years old. And shortly after that, about a year later, when I was 17 years old, my dad actually went bankrupt. Uh, his business partner took his money and disappeared, and debt left him with almost a million dollars in debt. In debt. And, and the, what, what industry was he in? Uh, in? International trade. International trade. International okay. trade. So and he was in not he he was not in Vancouver. He was in Hong where Kong. Where we are Hong today. Kong. Yes. So I was I was here with, with my mom. So that incident basically destroyed my dad's finance, mm -hmm. but also destroy his confidence. Yeah. He was never the same man again. He was never the same man again. So from there, uh, as the only child in my family, I had to grow up. I had to man up very quickly. I needed to take care of my mom because my mom is a housewife. She's never worked a day in her life. She hadn't at the time. Yes. And still. 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 So I was very driven to provide for my mom because in my mind, it's okay to let myself down, it's not okay to let my family down. Mm. So then, at a very young age, I, I've been always been very entrepreneurial. Wait, wait, so where did your father, where, so your, where did your, did your father come back to Vancouver or nope. did he stay in Hong Kong? No, so after he went bankrupt, uh, I was actually very angry. I had a lot of resentment sure. toward, towards my dad. So I didn't talk to him for a few years, Okay. right? Because I felt that, like, what is going on? Like, you left me in, in Canada and then, you, you, you stop supporting us and what kind of father are you? But later on, I actually found out a lot more things. Uh, so then uh, our relationship after a few years were, were phenomenal. But first few years, I was young. I was a teenager. I was, didn't understand. You know, I didn't understand. I didn't understand yeah. what my dad was going through. But I always refer as that incident because some people might look at that, oh, you know, poor, poor, poor Dan. Dan. Yeah. But that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Because if my dad didn't go bankrupt, if I didn't come to Canada, I would not be where I'm today. It's because of that incident, I learned self-reliant. I have to, to rely on myself, and that's why I'm always so driven. I always say it's one thing to be successful, it's a whole other thing to stay successful. A lot of people, they become successful, but they don't stay successful. So I've always been very driven. I'm more driven today than when you were 16 and, was and, and saying, wait a minute, I need to yep. provide for everyone That's all of a right. sudden. What were the early businesses you did? Oh, I did. Uh, were you early on a copywriter? Yeah, no, but even earlier. What was before, before that? Uh, landscaping business. Yeah, right, right. Everybody's too, yeah. tried that before. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every school. entrepreneur. That's right. Painted houses, landscaping, Painted, right? sold something. Yeah. A delivery. Delivery, yeah. yeah. Uh, Warren uh, Buffett, maybe. Yes, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, uh, fixing computers for people. Yeah. Uh, and... Like uh, vending machines. Yes, vending machines. <laughs> vending machines. Yeah. None of them work, by the way. <laughs> right, no. None of them work. But I learned a it's lot a from them. It's a good starter. Yeah. Yes, but I did a lot of different businesses, and none of them really worked. And later on, I, um, I found my mentor, um, Alan, and Alan kind of took me under his wings, and then I became a copywriter. And in case the audience don't know what copywriting is, it's basically, you know, kind of like what you see in, in Mad Men, right? You're writing ads, yes. you're writing 
copy, sells copy. The jacket of a book. That's right. The, the like the ad, the full page yes. ad. Back yes. then, direct mail, right? Direct mail. So that was the the beginning of kind of my my career. So all these different businesses, they didn't work, but cooperating, it, it worked well for me. I mean, I was making good money as a young guy, twenty someone, you're twenty years old, yeah. right? As a as a copywriter, making six figure income. That was like. It was, so this would be what in the in this is the. Would this be early 2000s or yeah, this, early 2000s? Early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. And then 2000. The internet was really just getting started, yeah. and there was still plenty of room That's for right. well, copywriting. Still, you yes. can make money doing that, but in a different way. In a different way. And so then 2004, then I went online. So very early on, I remember it was back then. Uh, Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Search engine. Yeah. Um, the first search engine, Overture, pay per click search engine. I do remember Overture before Google, right? Uh, so that's how early. I was like doing that. So people were you a tech guy? Were you a, when you said you were fixing computers? Were you, did you? I, I wanted to ask you. Do you co did you know how to code early no. on? You're no. not a coder then. No. Okay. No. So it's interesting. People look at what I do and and they think the social media. Oh, well, you he's know, a tech guy. He's a tech guy. Or they would think the most common thing I hear from people. Oh, Dan Lok just came out of nowhere and kind of blew up. But actually, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Yeah. It's just because social media made it, you know, made my brand popular, that's all. It, but I've been in this space You've been for doing this time. for, well, so it's really 2004. been- 2004. 2004, but 2000. it's been the last three, three or two or three years that social media, has, has it been a little bit of that S-curve where all of a sudden it, it adopts slow adoption and then it just takes off? Correct. Is that, it, it, you Correct. hit that inflection point. Correct. So basically social media took me from a, a successful entrepreneur mm -hmm. to a global brand. That's a very, very different thing, right? It is. The scale, everything that we do. And that's why I'm such a big proponent and advocate of social media that people say, well, I don't like Facebook. I hear this. From, I don't mm -hmm. like, you don't need to like Facebook. <laughs> right. You don't need to it's like. like it's like saying, I don't like the fax machine yeah, back like, in 1980. Yeah, I, I don't I, like the fax machine. I don't machine. like my cell phone. I, I don't like You it. don't need to like your cell phone to use your cell phone. I think it's a good way to look at that because I think a lot of entrepreneurs they get frustrated with the roadblocks they hit in these different mediums. Facebook will change their algorithm. Now all of a sudden you can't reach their people. But I think it's a really good way to look at that where it's like saying, I don't like my phone. It's not your phone's fault. It's just that these mediums and, change. And I think a lot of people, they say, oh, my kids use this Instagram. Or yeah. they post, they go to Facebook. I, I see what my kids are doing, what my friends are doing. They are using social media for pleasure versus I use social media for profit. For profit. It's a very different thing. Because you look at most people's profile, you look at their social media profile, that is not designed to attract business. In some cases, it's yes. embarrassing yeah, it's because so you look so. at the social media profile, it is like a sales prevention department. Sales prevention <laughs> right? department. And you look at things even now, people don't talk about it. Like, see, let's say someone applying for a job, right? You're not supposed to do it, but everybody checks out your social media. They do. Yeah, they, they check do. out your Facebook, they check out Instagram. What kind of people are you? What kind of person yeah, you are, yeah. right? They want to check, okay, I see a lot of party, drinking, all that. Uh, I don't know if that's the employee I want, right? Yeah. They don't talk about it. It's not politically correct, but people do check you of out. Of course they check. So as a business owner, not more I, than that. The, the minute I hear about somebody, oh, I'm going on a new date. Well, let's look at Facebook. Let's check Immediately. it out. Immediately. Of yeah, course. Yeah, of course, of right? Course. Even in dating. Well, yeah. let's, let's see who am I dating, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. So that's where the attention is. Back then, the attention is on TV, but now attention is on the phone. It's on social media. I think what has shifted is consumers, now they want to consume content where they want it, when they want it, how they want it, on the exact device that they want it. So now consumers has, have very much more power. Who they want to listen to? If they don't want to listen to your message, they, it's not like they are not even paying attention. You cannot even get to them. Well, I think that, that, that it's even harder today that the, it's, I think it's even harder today because there's no barriers to entry. Correct. So there's cell phones, we, we can all have a video crew, yep. but it doesn't mean anybody can just put out good, good content. So in a world of three, 500,000 or 700,000 podcasts and a million YouTube channels, you've been able to really rise to the top. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess to our audience, t tell us about the core business because again, you're not using the internet you're using the internet to to further your entrepreneurial ventures. Hundred percent. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of times we hear influencers are just using the internet itself to make money. But you're t tell us about your core businesses. Yes, because I say that fame without fortune is frustration. 
Yeah, it is. It's because you could be famous. Oh, I have a lot of followers. And as you know, Wes, you cannot go to the bank and say, hey, I don't have no check, but I've got a lot of followers on yeah. Instagram. Can I deposit <laughs> that, right? Yeah. You cannot do that. Yeah. So that's not the point. Yeah. It is getting the attention, getting, getting the right attention from the right people, and then by educating them, adding value in, in advance. So here's what I believe in. You, you talk about adding value. Let's in just advance. skip right to adding value. Yes. Lo I love this. So instead of... Whatever product, give me an example. Give me something that, uh, that people sell. Uh, l let's talk about a riding lawnmower. Okay, a riding lawnmower, right? It's a, a relatively high ticket item. Yes. Right? It could and, be eight and, grand. Okay, let's say eight grand, right? Lawnmower. Instead of like yelling, screaming on the intersection, hey, I've got a lawnmower, buy my lawnmower, come to buy my lawnmower, right? That used to work before. Now it doesn't work because there are so many choices. And consumers have got so much power. They check out your price. They check out your features. They do check a lot. If they like, yeah, in they, general, they like it. They all like that before they even like whatever you say. They're like they don't. They don't believe it. People are skeptical. Instead of doing that, why don't we flip it around? Add value, meaning they say creating content in advance. People who would buy this kind of lawnmower, what kind of problems and frustrations would they have? Let's give them some content that will help them to have a more beautiful lawn, right? To help them take care of 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 the the flowers or whatever it is. When you do that, they're like, okay, this is interesting. You're adding value to what I do before you ask any money. Now they're more inclined, you have my attention. It's almost like you need to get attention first, then you get the permission to sell, to make an offer. Attention, brand, uh, trust in the brand. I call that brand equity, right? Brand equity. And then so sell. instead of me yelling and screaming and say, oh, I have this program, I have this product and all that. No, I just, I have so much content out there when people consume the content, if see, whereas if people are not even consuming your content, chances are they're not going to do business with you, right? If, and that's, they, if they're not interested enough to watch. And, right? and it's like exactly what you said, like before, you, before we met, it's like, you know, I, I, Dan, I don't feel like a stranger at all. I feel yeah. like I, I know you. Yeah. Now, how, how is that possible? Because you watch my content, you listen to my content. They said, like, you know my story ahead of time. So then when we get together, the bond is immediate. Well, and I think it's a very different, and, and I think that I, this is my version of how social media has worked, and radio is part of this. Yes. It's an older medium, but it still is a way to get familiar with people. And now, yes. and now it's easier to consume because most radio shows like Money Matters, it is, it is a podcast. Yes. So then if you can't listen live, you listen to it on demand. Correct. And, and I, and we know that a lot of our, our listenership comes now. Five years ago, it might have been 1% mm -hmm. from podcasts. Today, it's almost 50% there that's listening go. and saying, oh, I used to listen all the time on Sunday, but now I listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because oh, when I'm, I, when I'm driving. Yeah. yeah, I'm stuck in traffic, mm -hmm. so yeah. why wouldn't I listen? So the, I think that what, what I've noticed as I've gotten further into my career now, 20-some years, mm. the conversations by the time I'm meeting with somebody, it's very different because they do know so much more. Yes. They've watched, I, you know, I have 400 videos on YouTube. Yes. They've watched 20 of them. Yes. I, uh, I've, I have 800 podcasts. They've listened to, you know, 20, 50 of them. Yes. So there's a lot, to your point, we're in a world where, selling from the ground up on day one, mm. I, I don't know, I'm sure there's some industries left where that happens, but that's just not, that is an old, 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 old way to do model. business. A very old way of doing business, and it's not scalable. And it's, it isn't, yeah. Right, it's like... It's one, I, to one to one to one to one. One to one, and I, yeah. when I sit down with an entrepreneur, I say, okay, so what's your marketing strategy? If they, the minute they say, oh, it's like word of mouth referral, and I always say, you mean hope. <laughs> and I say, hope, you hope, hope, hope is not a strategy, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it's not predictable. But versus with the social media, I can put my message, my content in front of the people that I know that are receptive, that are most likely to, to do business with me. I can do it in a, in a mass scale. That, that's how you grow a company very quickly, right? L let's talk. So on Money Matters, we talk about, uh, I wrote a book called You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think, yes. the five money seekers of the happiest retirees. Yes. Um, the, the kind of the core, if you, if you look at how we design our content, it kind of goes into four main categories. It's the money, mm -hmm. and then it's adventure, it's social, and it's health. Mm -hmm. Really, the money part that we write about in the book is, is and our audience will, will know this, a couple of very important financial checkpoints we need to get to. It's five hundred thousand yes. dollars in liquid assets, at least minimum, uh, a, a mortgage that's either there paid off or mostly paid off, and then and multiple streams of income. The other intangible part of this is that 
uh, we've also talked to our audience about there, there, there are medical studies, uh, psychological or physiological or anthropological studies that show that if you're not engaged and you don't have a purpose and you're not continuing to pro progress, yep. then you will, you, your mortality literally rises, dementia rises, uh, depression goes up. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it is, it's statistically proven that that's the case. And a huge part of being able to be in a position to be able to retire, mm -hmm. maybe it's work optional, and I want you to talk about this, Yes, is that you know, we get to a point where if we're no longer working, then what are our core pursuits and what, are we, what, is, what is our fulfillment in life? Yep. So as an entrepreneur, and this is something I find different with entrepreneurs, is that you are, so let's talk about for you the money side of this and the freedom it allows you to do the things that you wanna do, or are you in a phase of life where you are, you are just having so much fun in the businesses you're in, is that that is a core pursuit and a passion of yours? That's a good question. I believe in life we go through four stages. Okay. The first okay. stage is what I call survival. And I talk about this yes, in, my, in yes. my book, Unlock It, right? So survival, that's you're trying to get a job, trying to pay the bills. Yeah. This just, is you when you were 16. Yes, and you gotta exactly. take care of your mother. That's yes. exactly the stage Family. you've yeah. gone through, right? So it's just survival, just, you, you, just, just worry about where your next meal is gonna come yeah. from, right? And then once you, get past that stage, then you evolve and transition to what I call security. Okay. Now you are safe, secure, you've got a roof over your head, you've got a car, you have a secure job, you have a little business going, maybe a small business, that's cool. And most people stay, kind of, you could say the middle class, mm -hmm. right? They stay at that stage for a long, long time. And then you transition to stage three is what I call success. Now when you're successful, and of course we're talking about money terms, money terms. that's, you, you don't just have everything you need, you have everything you want, mm -hmm. okay? You're not just living in a house, yep. you're living in the house that you, the want. House you want. You're yeah. not living, just driving a car, you're driving the Tesla, you're driving... By the way, the house that we are in, <laughs> for the listeners of the, Dan, of the Dan Locke interview here on Money Matters, is, is, a, just a, is a remarkable place. Appreciate it. It is a, it is a stunning house. It's, it's a, it, it looks as though, in, jo in Georgia, it reminds me of the governor's mansion, but even nicer, and uh, but it's got it's full of artifacts from wars and ships that are from the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> and it's just and it, but it's just it, it, but it's also really welcoming. So yes, it's, thank it, you. You've created a welcoming thank environment. You. So, so we go from success, success, and then what is next? Uh, the last stage is what I call significance. Significance is something completely different, and it sounds so cliche. Now you're asking the question, what's my legacy, mm -hmm. right? What, what do I want to leave behind? How to make truly how to make the world a better place. How do you make a difference? So in my life, and, and, I, and I'm not proud to admit it, for the first, let's say from my 20 years old, from 20 to 30 years old, I was chasing success, was chasing money. Because remember, right, Wes, back then I had no security, mm -hmm. right? My, my debt went bankrupt. So I thought without money that I, I felt that that's like, that worse. was your current, that, that was, was the measure thing. for you. That was That it. was your report card. That was it. It's, uh, it felt so insecure, paranoid mm -hmm. about. So I was chasing success, like more money, more money, more success. Very much ego driven, mm -hmm. right? Well, is this for shi chasing shiny dimes or ch chasing? Shiny object. Yeah. Shiny so object. More than that, it's just ego driven. It was me, 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 me. Yeah. Okay. It was, I was buying a new car, like new sport car. As soon as you were making it, you were spending all that, it. All that stuff, right? Yeah. Like that's not a good habit because Oh, good example. I would be like going out with my friends and, and we'll have dinners and I would drop like 3K on a night. Mm. Stupid money, like stupid, stupid this money. This is all in your 20s. So yeah, you're making a ton, yeah, I was just but you're just, it was going right money, out the door. Stupid money. Yeah. I thought that would get friendship from people, right? Yeah. You know, buying my friends dinner, taking them to vacations and okay. all this. But I was the insecure little teenage boy still back then, yeah. even though I have more success. Until I hit 30 years old, what happened? What was the change? Two things. First of all, one thing, um, one day I woke up in the morning, tears were coming down my cheek, and Jenny, my wife, was asking me, what's going on? Because she never sees me cry. Like, it's mm -hmm. like once, we've been together 12 years, you've seen it once or twice, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're crying, like, what is going on, Dan? It's, like, are you not feeling well? Like, do mm -hmm. we need to go to the hospital? I said, I have no idea. I have this depression, mm -hmm. like this, this void in me. I don't know what is going on. And she was like, well, like, that's odd. That's very, very odd. And, 
And I said, I don't know. I just feel. And it's something, not something you had had before. I've never, never had before. Yeah. I guess I was very determined knowing what I want. And it's like something, a message, someone like within me is like, okay, this is cool, but something is missing, you know, mm -hmm. something is a, that fire, that void. And so then I, it's very interesting. So the first 10 years, chasing success. Then I went on to a different journey, more of the spiritual path. So we're studying and a lot. And that's when that, that, that morning you woke up is when it started, it started to change. And yeah. it changed quickly for you. Very quickly. It, it took me a few months. I okay. went on this journey, kind of self-discovery. Yeah. Like, kind of try to find myself. Yeah. And, and now what? The, okay, I, I am good at making money. I'm good at building businesses. I'm mm -hmm. good at all these things. But then now what? So from there, and the second thing that happened was uh, my dad passed away. So when my dad you, passed away. Tell us that story. I was chasing the biggest deal in my career, a multi, multi-million dollar deal, okay. okay? And my dad at the time went to the hospital in Hong Kong, and I promised him, Dad, no problem. I'm gonna make you proud, Dad. I'm gonna close this deal. I'm gonna be set for a long, long time, mm. right? Then I'll come back, I'll, I'll see a fight. And, and the deal was in Vancouver? It was it in was the US. It, it was in US. It was, okay, not Canada, it was in the no, US. It was, yeah, so I was traveling. But he was in Hong he Kong. He was in Hong Kong. So I told him on the phone, I said, Dad, no problem, I'm gonna close this deal. Because in my mind, I thought closing that deal, that is going to make him proud. Mm. It's going to be great. And then we're going to have the mo all this money and it's going to fix everything. Right. It's going to make everything great. I got the call and then my dad passed away. I didn't get to see him. I lost the deal. You lost the deal. And I lost and the deal. you did not see him. And that changed, that flipped my world upside down. It took me a few weeks to recover, but it flipped my world upside down. Because think about it, Wes. You're chasing the biggest deal in your life. You thought, I'm going to make my dad proud. But the person I want to make him proud is no longer no here. No longer here. Then what am I doing this for? Yeah. What, like, what's my purpose? That I was, it's, so I was, later on I realized, I was using my dad as an excuse to chase these things, these like, the, the success, the, the achievement and all of that, really is to, Offer out my own insecurities, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Later on, I realize it. At, and, at but, that, so it took that. you this this a couple of major life events, yeah. and and you and effectively over a, a shorter period of time, mm -hmm. you realized that you needed money not for just you and your ego, but for significance over time. And that that changed everything. And and then from then I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, before all those incidents, every single one of my companies, it's all like it's all about like grabbing all the chips on the table. It's all about what do I get, right? How much can I make, mm -hmm. right? I don't care about you, like I want how much I make. From then on, everything I do, it's focusing, okay, how can I add more value to the marketplace? How can I help my students and, and customers? And that's why we, you're asking me what we do. We run a global education company with students in 150 countries, really giving people the skill sets, the mindset they need to to be financially confident. I talk about financial confidence in my book. So that's the main thing what I do. I'm also the CEO of Closest.com. That's a SaaS that, that we have, a platform. So the two, two companies yeah. are... Is Dental it, Education. An education company yeah, that you may teach you know, thousands of people. Yes. Uh, skills on... How, Closing, how, yeah. entrepreneurship, business. And this is something that you'll do live. You'll do, you'll do recordings. Correct. over. Correct. Okay. Online, right? That's an education division of what we have. Uh, we have, and know, then the software part of the this software, is... which is closest.com, okay. which is think of it as a kind of, I say it's the Uber for salespeople. So if a, so uh, salespeople come for more training or are they looking for it's companies come to us and say they want proven salespeople and we match them up with, oh, uh, that makes a lot of closers. Sense. Okay. Right. So it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a talent agency. It's a talent that. agency it, for, it, for salespeople. For salespeople. So, I mean, uh, and, and that's just the two, of course, the real estate and a lot of different things I do. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of what you do? What is, what is, what do you like right now? And let's call it over the next year or two, mm. Dan, as things continue, right? I have two questions for you right now. One, I want to know what the, what the favorite thing you're doing is. Mm. And two, we have seen so much change in media with digital. Mm. Is there another new leg of big change coming? Or are we, are we new to social and social has a, a long runway? The, the next five, six years is social, social, social. It's Instagram. Awesome. What is it? Good question. So first question, what's my favorite thing in, in terms of 
like my of business. all the businesses, all you've the got education, you have real estate. Yeah, uh, you do it. You do a video. You probably do twenty videos a day. I mean, <laughs> do you get sick of doing this or do you love it? What what parts do you lo well, simple, love? Right remember now? Remember uh, about my death incident, right? So I sit down and really think about when am I the the happiest in my life? Mm -hmm. You know, when am I the happiest? Is when I was in high school, I got bullied, I got beat up, mm -hmm. and to protect myself for self defense, I actually took martial arts. So after I took martial arts, uh, I was, you know, the, the kids were bullying me. I was actually teaching them martial art and teaching them, hey, you don't need to beat up, up other people. You can be self-confident because bullies are usually are, are, are a, very cowards. Insecure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, and I found that I was the happiest when I'm teaching. Wait, wait, you, you did not teach a bully martial arts. I taught the bully martial arts. The people who beat me up, well, after I learned martial art, I taught them to become my students. In in a kind of an incident where they were where they were trying to bully you, or did they eventually come into your studio and you became their karate teacher, mm -hmm. your martial arts? Martial arts, kung fu teachers. Kung fu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, and that's and you loved it. I love it, and, and so, you still love it. I still see some my YouTube videos. Yeah, my you're still art. doing it. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's I, mean, I learned a little self discipline focus from martial. A lot of what I learned as a business person, as an entrepreneur, I learned from martial arts. From martial so arts. then I found that I'm the happiest when I'm teaching. Yes. That's, that's my zone of, of, yes. of genius, right? I'm the happiest. So everything I do, so I structure everything I do so I could do a lot of that. Okay. Right? The, to me, like when you are making a video, I, I'm teaching. I mean, I, I joke about it because you think about our reach, uh, let's say on YouTube, almost 1.5 million like followers, subscribers. Like, we grew that in a, a very few years. I said, I don't have prank. I don't do prank. Right. I don't do skit. <laughs> I don't have bikini girls. Right. It's just kind of just me On, in the camera. teaching. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not super exciting, anything like that. But that's just me being me, right? Yeah. And, and I think that, that resonates with people somehow. The, uh, it, it absolutely resonates with people. Okay, now that you... you, you Five years ago, well, when did you start YouTube? How many years ago? That was how, how early of an adopter? Fourteen. Okay, fourteen. It's only been five years. Yeah. So where are we in in another five? <laughs> it, it, are are all the mediums that it, it, you're on today? Are they? Do they have a oligopoly on the digital economy? Is it is it gonna just is it Facebook and Google basically? The Facebook Google obviously owns YouTube. Facebook owns Instagram. Is it those four? Throw Twitter aside, if you will. I I, I agree. I think Twitter, of course, like, mm, right? But with Instagram owned by Facebook, obviously, Google owns YouTube. Uh, it's very simple. If you think about kids, teenagers, the, the YouTube becomes a babysitter. <laughs> it does. You're so, so right, because right? I have four kids. Yeah, the kids grew YouTube's up YouTube's my best babysitter. YouTube. Yeah, you ask them, hey, how do you do something? They're not going to say, YouTube. Like how, how, yeah. do, how do you make this thing? How do you... Yeah. How do, I learned it on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. My son learned to play the guitar on YouTube. So yeah. they grew up on YouTube. YouTube is the only thing they know. Yeah. So oh, where did you learn to play guitar? Marty Schwartz on YouTube. There you go. It's my favorite right. channel. Right. And yeah. how do you connect with fans, uh, with yeah. your friends, uh, texting or Facebook or different things? I'm sure they would, there might be another platform, but currently, right now, LinkedIn is also becoming huge. They're going through some big transformation. Sure. So you kind of want to be have that first move advantage if you're selling B two B, right? Yeah. And business but, to business, you want to be on LinkedIn, and that's Microsoft. So that's the Microsoft. Th three of the, th the three, three biggest kind of big, technology the big, kind of the big that, three. Right? At yeah. this point, it's kind of they dominate everything. They really do. Uh, so uh, the way that we shop, think about Amazon. It changes completely the way that we shop. It, does, it sets yeah. a different expectation. And look at you look at Amazon's business model. Well, they're not just e-commerce. They're now, it's like a global domination. It is. Kind of it thing, is right? global domination. They, it's like people talk about Amazon is not trying to just be everywhere. They're not trying to just, you know, be an e-commerce company. They're trying to be a company that you cannot live without. Well, wow. It doesn't matter what effort you do, you're going to touch in their some business way. in some way, shape, or form, right? Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, even my grocery store now. So where it's you know they just right. built a Whole Foods Amazon right next. Imagine to Imagine if they have the yeah. drone; they can deliver groceries to your door. You get used to that, or even you know how they have like walk into the store and you don't have to check out and just your the, phone. The Prime Shop. The Prime Shop. Yeah. Once you get used to that, guess what? You're never going back. You're never going Why back. Why would I go back to a cashier? And, and, and it forces everyone else to adapt. Now, the Prime Shop. That's how I shop. When I walk into Walmart, what do you mean I still got to line up and do yeah. it? That doesn't. So Walmart now has to adapt to what Amazon. So Amazon sets a new standard. 
for the entire industry. So Amazon is going to dominate for 100 percent for sure. Yeah. But social is so critical, and I believe so many companies are being left behind because they think that oh, I I don't need to do this or I don't have time for do this. I'm like. You look at my company. I've, like really, you have education, different things. But I run my company very much like a media company. Like a, it really is. It really is. Although I'm not N not as much as an education company, yes. more as a media company a media that media does company. education. It does a hundred percent. Yes. So I have my whole media division, and that's how we could produce so much content, right? So every company, I believe, need to run it that way nowadays. It, okay, so let's let, let's go back to let's. I, I was at a, mm -hmm. uh, a client of mine is um, a physician, mm -hmm. and they're transitioning to a more of a wellness practice. That's good. All right, and he he, he had some. He, he's behind, let's say behind with with internet marketing. Yes. Str struggles to let's say have a, a good website, which is like you know, <laughs> yes. obviously he's not doing all the other social. He's not yes. doing any other social media, yep. but knows he needs to. Yeah. And there's probably a million small businesses, b yeah. b doctors in America that are the same way, and there's yep. a million other businesses, uh, millions in all these diff different industries. Where where do they go and who do they hire? So let's. Do they come to you, you tr teach them on some of the things they need to start doing, then they go hire an agency. Wh what, what are the millions of businesses that are so far behind today do to try to even remotely catch up mm. in the digital world that we are living in today? I think- Or are you, doing, are you doing that at a couple hundred thousand or a couple thousand businesses at a time? Yes, yeah, so like for with what we do, and good question, you know how we have the closers? Right? Yeah. The next phase of our company, yes, we're going to also help a lot of people with the digital marketing side because I have so many people come to me, right? Like, how do we do I, this? Yeah, I have CEOs of big companies, huge companies, yeah. right? Asking, Dan, how do you do your social, right? Can you train my team? Yeah. Right? Can I hire your team? Yes. Like, I've been getting, like, cause they, all they can see is our results, but they wonder, like, what's the magic? Like, or is it, is it a fluke? And then when I break down everything I do, they, they're like, oh my goodness. Yes. Right? And then the next, Conclusion is I can't do this. Right, <laughs> I, I need some help. Right, but, but but it's hard for you. You can't just bring in a team of people. Mm -hmm. Well, it would just be a, a whole other business model. Yeah, you. it would be. It would be. It would be. Like you look at what we do. It's like there are many many different components of what we do. Are you thinking about? Is that an interesting business for you in the future? Is to train uh, and scale a, a, a 20,000, 100,000 businesses to do social better? Yeah. Is that a business you, you want, you're going to be in? Because with me, the teaching part, I have training the closer side, which really, let's talk about money matters, is helping individuals generate more income. That's what my yes. whole book is about. Yes. On the other side, with myself, not only I have like appealed to the, the mass market, but I'm also a member of YPO, mm -hmm. right? So I appeal to the CEO market. Yes. which they come to me for social because I'm so successful in, in the mass market. So like you see with, as we grow, it's like two different categories, industries that we're in. But it goes back to your question, how do we help small businesses to grow, right? Uh, very, very bare minimum, they need to do what I call education marketing. Okay. So it goes back to, to your, your, uh, your friend, right? Physician. Instead of just, hey, here's what we sell, here's what we do. That, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. You need to educate people on, think about what you do, Wes, right? Your company, financial planning. Yeah, we're how, inv how, investment company. Investment yes. company. How yeah. many financial planners, advisors out there in, in well, America? Let's call it a million. All right, a million. that's a lot of yeah, people, right? It's a lot of people. What makes you stand out? You are a media personality. You've got multiple books. Mm -hmm. You are creating content ongoing. Yes. Right? All You're putting the time. so much out there. Right, that's what differentiates from everybody else. Everybody else is trying to, hey, hire me to do your financial planning. Hire us, invest with us. Right. You're like, give, no, give, 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 here's my business card. And they go to the networking thing, right? right? You're like, no, I'm gonna create so much value. I'm gonna build my audience first. And when my audience needs my help, I've been there for so long, for so many years. See, I think that's the other game where a CEO comes to you and says, "Hey, I see, I see that you've done this. Yes. Let's. How do I get? How do we do this?" But it really is a. It is time. It is, it time. is a lot of time. And, and, and the problem is, they think, "Oh, I don't have time for that. I'm running my company." <laughs> and I'm saying, if you don't have time for this, you're not going to be running a company very soon because you won't have a company when. 
when the consumer. It's like saying, I, I don't, it's like 1980s, I'm not going to do the yellow pages. I'm not going to do it. yellow pages. Don't right? believe in it. And consumers are very unforgiving. It is not like I see companies, it's not like, okay, yeah, our sales is like this, it's going, all going, and then it's kind of plateau. No, it's not plateau. It's like this. Within a very, you've seen it before. Yeah. Within big company, huge company, billion dollar company, could go to business in, in a year. Like, like that. Yeah, a couple years. Yeah. Target in Canada. Mm hmm. Gone. Target in Canada. Gone. It's what happened to this? Well, I, it seems so similar. Vancouver seems like I, I could be, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful city, but it could be a lot of, like a lot of other cities in America. Mm -hmm. And the consumers seem similar. What, what the heck did Target do that, that messed up here? My perspective is very simple. They went into, they did a bunch of acquisitions, mm -hmm. opened up a lot of locations. They spent so much time renovating. By the time they spent months thinking of a big launch, the few months they were, like the months or years, different locations, spent a lot of money renovating. Consumers can shop there. They're already changing their behavior. Mm -hmm. By the time you open, they, people are creatures of habits. Now you want to change. I've already shopped at all these other places. We, they took a year and a half, a year to renovate. Now I'm the shopping store. at Walmart. I'm shopping Sorry, at I'm TNT. Gone. I'm shopping at all these other places. Now your price point, like with Target, not too high, not too low, kind of in the middle. Yeah. You're not the cheapest. You're not the most expensive. So you're kind of stuck in the middle. I've already picked my new my, my new retailer. That's, and then you're done. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? Like a few months, you're done. Yeah. What What is a risk for you guys? Do you think? What What, what is a risk for? The, the education business that you're in? I, well, the risk is always uh, being people um, knock us off. I have people almost every damn day setting up like fake social media profile, pretending to be to me. To be you. To be yeah, you. I yeah, have okay. a perfect example. I have a, uh, someone who set up a, a profile on a website um, giving people like stock tips, yeah, right? A Using under my profile, telling people to invest in this, don't invest in that and all that. So I've got a full legal team every day just shutting this down. Imposters. Yeah. yeah. Fake well, it's Instagram, identity, it's, fake. It's, it's identity theft. It's, it's identity theft, right? That. On Facebook and doing and, and teaching people to do this. And I'm like, I don't even, it's just not me at all, right? Well, that's also the, 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 that, price. That's that's the price of you of you being at the very, very top yeah. though, too. Yeah. I mean, there's really not, there's not that many folks that are as big it as you It goes back guys. to uh, the risk for us, from what I see, not just for risk for me, for anybody. Yeah. Uh, AI, of course, right? A lot of jobs will be replaced by AI. Sure. Right? Sure. Uh, you already see fast food. Uh, you know, Uber, drivers, like delivery services, construction workers, a lot of those I, 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 It's been a while since I traveled, even, even the kiosks to get into the country in Canada. There you that go. Was a, there was a, so it was there a field of, of kiosk robots to, yeah. to scan my passport and, and make sure if, that... If, if, if <laughs> just for fun, if you actually go to China, you will be blown away by how automated things are. Much more so than the United States. Much more so. Like here, a lot of it's 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 everything is WeChat. We pay through just the just yeah. the phone with almost everything. Uh, in uh, in China. In China. Whereas so, here, it's like, do you pay take Amazon Pay or do you, or yeah, I'm sorry, no, do you just take Apple thing, Pay or not? Yeah. One thing. So so and restaurants. Wow. Yeah. Face recognition. You take the stuff. Face recognition. You go. Like, and this is China. Yep. So it's that's coming here. Hundred percent. You see. Hundred percent. Do you, do you uh, what about AI? I, this is the or what about uh, auto, automated? What about self driving or automated so, vehicles? So think about that. You, that is one I'm, I have a t I have tough time getting my arm around just because it, it we, roads are dynamic to some extent. Yep. Highways aren't, but roads are with. Yep trees down and we live in like hurricane alley so there's always something happening i i, I wonder I, I go back and forth there was a time i thought oh wow of course we're gonna have self-driving vehicles yes. everywhere and now i think ah, it does seem like it's going to be a while what's your take on that uh, i think it's going to be quicker than we think you do okay 100%. you think quicker i, I okay. really think because you can see a lot of things that if a uh, car or automobile or fast food they're already, they're already testing it. Mm -hmm. You look at, let's say, McDonald's, right? Now you see all those kiosks, mm -hmm. right? You can see they're already reducing the number of cashiers, yeah. right? Slowly, they don't do it overnight. Now people are getting, I don't want to line they up. They get used to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to line up, I'm going to do this. So before you know it, from, let's say, 10 cashiers, it's going to be five, it's going to be four, it's going to be two. Then you have more kiosks than cashier. You will see that, number yeah. one. Then second thing, I, I'm guessing, drive-through. Mm -hmm. 
would be order ahead of time the phone and you pick it up, you're gone, right? Very or, simple. and then the next iteration, I guess, is, is a self-driving vehicle that delivers, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Let's talk about, I want to get to the book, I want to talk a little bit about the book too, but let's talk about, um, it, it, we've talked about money and, 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 and biz, what, what you're doing is helping bring business owners, small, medium, and large into the digital age, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, and it, clearly it's about content creating value. Yeah. It, but it's not a light switch. It's not something you can just buy. You can't just buy a package. And I love it. It's not a light switch. Yeah. Because it's not something you just, you can, a lot of companies, they have a lot of money, but it's not just that. Because you could spend a lot of money on an ad, but if it doesn't resonate with people, yeah. with the audience, it doesn't mean anything. Or I could be creative. I don't spend a lot of money on an ad, but somehow the ad goes viral, the video goes viral, the consumers like it. I love it that way. Mm -hmm. So it levels a playing field. Yeah. It means it doesn't matter what, I, I, we have the same advantage or disadvantage as a Fortune 500 company. In today's world. In today's world. Which is, which is amazing. It's beautiful, right? Yeah. It's just because they have big money they can spend doesn't mean they're going to win. Just because I have little resources doesn't mean I'm not going to win. Right? It's, it's great. And, and in the investment world, as you know, venture capitals are also struggling because now it requires less and less capital to scale a company. Right, right. Right? Like before, yeah, let's raise $100 million. $100 million to scale. you don't need it. No, now, entrepreneurs like, I don't want your money. Yeah. I'm scaling, I'm bootstrapping, it's fine. I don't yeah. want to take your money. Yeah, I don't want to sell 80% of my so company. So now they're sitting on this cash, there's nothing to invest. Right. Also with technology, remember back in the old days to set up a website, how oh, much it was it like cost? 20 grand. That's crazy. 50 grand. Now yeah. anybody can yeah. set up a website yeah. like for nothing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, times has changed. The, the playing field is leveled, and I, I think that... You and know, the th bear of entry is high. I like the bear of entry being high. To, to doing to content. Get to, to, yes. Because it takes time. That's right. Yeah. I love it. Easy to create something for a day, but yeah. very difficult to create content over a long, a long, period long sustainable period of time. Yes. So you've got a lot of stamina for this game. Yeah. You, you and Gary, Gary V has a yep. lot of stamina. He says, you know, he's in there to, to give every single day. He, yes. He, he, well, he, 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 you know he, Gary works, he works way harder than, than I do. He does? He works way is harder he, than is I he do. Is he a 24-7 guy? Uh, he works way harder. I mean, the way he creates content, he's got like almost 900 people. Like, I don't, I love Gary, respect mm -hmm. Gary tremendously. Don't envy his life. Like, <laughs> he, he's just yeah, he absolutely 24-7. No, nah, I still, like, even though I do a lot of social media, but I'm very efficient about it. So I built my social media around my life. I don't build my life around social media. Okay, so that's what my, my next question is this. And, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm maybe a few more years down the road than you, and I ended up having a bunch of kids. So I've got four little guys. Yes. I've got four little guys running yes. around my house, four boys. And as a business owner with kind of two, two main jobs, which is the investment world that I live in, yes. uh, which also takes a lot of content creation and writing and, and video, and then the media side, which is somewhat as a separate the radio and mm. is a separate somewhat of a separate um, business. So it, it is a lifestyle that it's, it's, it's kind of all the time. Yep. And I think that it's very easy for any, any entrepreneur, any career to, to have that totally dominate. I, I do like the world that we live in today because there is, there is more flexibility yep. and there's more, um, there's, I think in 20, you know, 2020 versus 19, 70, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot easier to bring your kids along and have your family involved. I mean, yeah. I'm, I come to your house, your yes. wife's here, yes. you've, got, you've got this wonderful team, and they're just, everyone's integrated in what you're doing. Yes, 100%. Um, the, so I like that about the economy today, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. my, now that my boys have gotten a little bit older, it, it makes it easier for me to integrate the business into our life, yes. and our life into the business, yes. and I don't feel like I'm being pulled away. Yes. Um, the, 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 but we go through this as we, so we've talked about money. I want to talk a little bit about the adventure, kind of the adventurous side of you, because I, you obviously yes. have a lot, a lot of adventure in you. Um, and then, and then the, the social side of having a team and having that help what you're doing for significance. Right. So let's address those, those items. Well, well, first of all, what do you do for fun? Like what you, you, you've got all, let's say you've got all the money in the world, which you, 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 you're but very successful and you can kind of do whatever you want to do. Yes. What do you do for fun? Or is the, is the business the core pursuit of your life and that's The fun business right is a lot of fun for sure because yeah. I work with who I want to work with. Right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of my, I always say that uh, an entrepreneur is uh, an artist in commerce. 
Yeah. Okay. So this is how this is how yes. I paint my picture. Yeah. Right. Turn that's my idea into reality. It. Right. So like that's my art form. Right. I practice martial art. Yes. Right. I collect my my superheroes toys. You can see. Right. <laughs> yes. Dan has a, has <laughs> Iron Man. He's got Tony li live Tony Stark Iron Man downstairs. <laughs> so so that's like my thing. And you've got toys. you've got the, the, the Infinity hand of Gauntlet. Thanos. Yeah. The Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. The, right. By like, the way, the, the, by the way, that's amazing. I, I love the story. The, the, not to get off track, but I love the story. I recently wrote about just the the, the, the difference between having money and having time and money together, both yes. on your side. Yes. Because even if you have this amazing DNA, and Marvel obviously mm -hmm. has the the perfect DNA, yes. right? The yes. best content in the world. Yes. Be, best. In two thousand and or nineteen ninety six, Marvel went bankrupt. That's it was right. Chapter eleven. That's right. Got bought by a toy company. And then sold for four point two billion to Disney in what oh nine, but then, you know, fast forward, in in from oh nine till today, you know, in the first eleven days, Avengers Endgame did two billion dollars globally. That's right. That's right. For a company that Disney paid only four billion dollars for. That's right. And and, and the, the Avengers series has done twenty billion dollars over twenty twenty one billion. And how much more? It's amazing. How much more they could they could generate? Um, <laughs> I, again, just a, just a phenomenal. It, but it's a testament to also the the how d the money isn't. It, it really is about time and the belief that your concept will eventually play out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that you know Tesla has to keep raising money, and I think they'll be able to. Do it. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know, um, but Am Amazon it really kind of proved that. And and the entrepreneurs who embrace this and they're creating content. Think of it this way. It's very simple. The way I see it, Wes. Think about the content you create. Think about the social media you do. Brand. I call that the brand equity. Yeah. Every single piece of content you create. Imagine that's a bank. You're depositing money. Every this single, is your saving. This is your saving. You, you, you do that interview, that's, that's a deposit, right? Mm -hmm. You write the article, that's a deposit. Now imagine business owners, they go to this bank, right? They say, I want to do a withdrawal, I want to make some sales. Well, how much deposit have you done? Well, I don't care. So imagine you walk in the bank and say, give me some money, I got no money in, in the account. <laughs> that's called robbery, Yeah. right? Or oh, that's kind of overdraft. Yeah, that does overdraft, not, that I like does that. not work, right? Yeah. But if you've been depositing money, Building that goodwill, brand equity in the marketplace. So then, when you sell something, your audience is like, "Yeah, that's okay. I'm okay with it." Yeah. What they don't want is, "Why? Who the hell are you? Why are you selling me? Try to do a withdrawal? Like, what is this? Right. right? That works against you. So I see. I want that deposit to be so massive. I want that reserve to be so massive. Right? Mm -hmm. Why are we creating so much content? Why are we so motivated to create content? Because every single time, that video. It's a deposit. Because think about that video, it could be someone somewhere watching that video, and then you connect, and then you're here, and then we connect, and then the relationship and the right. business. Like yeah. that's, that is not a linear growth. That's it's a geometric compound. growth. It's yes. compound growth, right? I can see my marketing director, Mallory, she's going to put like a street sign in, in the marketing <laughs> area that just says, Deposit street. It's time for a deposit. Depo West. Make a deposit. Time for a deposit. Deposit, right? Time for a deposit. But, but, uh, that is, it is actually a really wonderful way to think about it. Yes. You're depositing it, and at some point, just like it takes a lot of time, just like investors in the early years, it doesn't seem like it's much, but then once it reaches critical mass, then compounding on a large number becomes an amazing number. Uh, can I share a secret with yes, you? Yes, I'll share a secret with you. When I uploaded- It'll be just between you, me, and all of our radio yeah, yeah. So, so when I uploaded my first video back in 2004 on YouTube, 2004, 2004, yes, okay. four. Uh, and my very first video, and I didn't think too much of it, and only a while later, I, I made a decision to go kind of all in, mm -hmm. and why did I do that? It's very simple. I look at, in the, in the YouTube space, how many influencers are in the business category? Very little. Very few in 04. Very few. Yeah. Even today. That has over a million subscribers, very few. So that's when I saw the opportunity. I can count them with one hand. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, there's an untapped Void. market. Void. There's right there, and I and that's what we did. Yeah. And, and so it, it's and it's to a point where it's like you 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 put you're making deposit, you're making deposit to a point. This thing kind of compounds in this investment. Comp Back then, think about when I upload a video. 
I would get two views, five views. Yeah, I mean, Damn. like everybody else. It, it's hard to imagine. It is that Just like everybody else, oh, yes. Dan Locke had a video that had like 10 views. <laughs> I'll tell you something funny. I'll upload a video. One like, uh, one down. I, I get like three <laughs> views, and I would refresh a couple times to get a couple of views going <laughs> myself, right? And I, I sign up for an account. I sign up like three Google accounts, subscribe to my own channel, just to get so a you few. at least get one, two, I get three. one, I'm like, it is, it is sad, right? What do you think was a tip? I want to ask you sad. too about what you like to invest in, by the way, yes. beyond, beyond uh, content. I love these depo this deposit. I'm going to start using that deposit. Mm -hmm. um, what What do you think? So you're early to yeah. that. You were you were first mover esque. Let's say. I know you've got original content. It's from the heart, so that helps. Yeah. But did you? Is there a point? There surely there was a point where you doubted that this thing was going to work. Or there was, or you got frustrated, or 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 not. Like, what was the? What, was there a tipping well, from, point? Well, from from from, let's say, take YouTube for yeah. Put outside other other platforms. So I was already generating five figure income when I had four figure subscribers. I was generating six figure income when I had five figure subscribers. Okay. Right? I was generating seven figure income with six figure subscribers. Okay. So I saw the trend. Right? And I wasn't even that sophisticated when it comes to YouTube back then. Okay. But I knew how that works. Not, not including any other channels, but just from that. So you think about on, on YouTube, nowadays, I mean, I can show you the numbers, that on average, our content is consumed about 30 million minutes per month. 30 million, million minutes. minutes. So I'll reach, if I, I can show the statistics, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, just the three, organic, not including pay, yeah. just the three channels, we reach about 60 to 70 million people on a monthly basis. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That is a lot. But, well, that's and more people too. than, but, but think about, I, I think about back when I was on The Apprentice, back when TV was still NBC, you know, Thursday mm. night must-see TV. Yes. Uh, in the Apprentice days, and we were doing, I think we had 18 million viewers at the time, and that was like as big as it was getting. I remember, I think it was when we, The Apprentice ended, Friends ended, you know, 18 to 20 million was a massive, massive number on yeah. television. Yeah. And you're doing that online. Online. And you're doing it every single month. Yeah, and then, and it, and, it, and it grows, versus a TV show, mm -hmm. when it stops oh. airing, airing, that's it, it's right? Over, yeah. And this grows, it's people sharing. Like, I know, let's say a year from now, we sit down together again, the numbers will be higher. Yeah. 100%, maybe 100, 150 million. You take that out for a year, that's billion reach, yeah. right? I'm not talking about impression, I'm talking about reach. It, it's right? funny, the, the, yeah, I mean, it's funny to me because I think of investing and I think about what we do is, a, it, it's, not, it's not a great visual, so for Instagram, for instance, you know, I haven't figured out, at least, you could probably figure this out, but it hasn't lent itself all that well to a, 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 a scene of a beautiful mountain or the, the, the Puget Sound in, mm. in, uh, in, in Seattle. Or, so it, to me, I thought that nobody would ever watch boring investment videos that I would do sitting in my office or like you're sitting in yes. this chair. I was like, Mallory, there's no way people are going to watch a video of me talking about um, and, and any money. sort of topic, you know, Social Security, uh, uh, happy retirees need $82,000 yes. a year, how to never run out of money, the 4% yes. rule. It's like, Mallory, nobody's going to watch these things. Yes. But I will do them because you tell me to do them. Yes. And it is pretty remarkable how, how they get in a wave. How and, many and people now contact you because, hey, Wes, I, I watched your video. I, I listened to it. When I show. first had it happen, and it's only been in this past year. Mm -hmm. It's only been this past year. You're making that deposit, that, right? That, uh, and I was like, are you serious? You really just, you really, you do? Yeah, I've watched 20 of them. Really? You've watched 20 of them? There you go. It, it is pretty amazing. Yeah. And the amazing thing is when people consume your content, that I call that a consumption theory, right? When people consume your content, just this is, I'm generalizing yeah. this, okay? For every $1,000 you want people to spend with you, you need to consume at least one hour of your content. That's one hour. One hour of your content. 1, now, that could be, it could mean that it's a one hour interview. Yeah. It could be like five minute video with a you know, bunch of videos. Yeah. You could do that. But they need to be exposed to you multiple times. And what happens is by the time they get to you, it's a very different prospect. I bet it's a very different prospect. Yeah. That before it's like, okay, Wes, tell me what you can do for me. Yeah. How are you going to manage my money? Right. right. I talk to these guys. Like, right. The people who consume your content, oh, Wes, I, I love your content, man. I love what you share. Like, 
they are already pre-interested and pre-qualified. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of times are hopefully have been helped, right, for a there long you go. time. Right? Like, they it, maybe oh, have helped for exactly. five years. So when people come to me and say, hey, Dan, your free content has done this much for me already. and for my career. Yeah. I mean, I want to do some business with you. Yeah. Just like, it's, it's a no-brainer. It requires no selling. I want to do like a pre-selling or ahead of the time. Mm -hmm. So then when I actually sit down with someone, it's easy. They know me. It's not a stranger. Now I don't need to spend a lot of time. It's amazing when they sit down with me. Oh, I, I know your story. Yeah. I could I'm already ready to do business. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. Like, I, I know, I know your, the struggles. I know your values. I know what you're about. I know what you're not about. If it resonates with me, great. If it doesn't, that's good. Like I have people, I know your martial art background. Hey, you're a Bruce Lee fan? I'm a Bruce Lee fan too. Yeah. Like a lot of that connections, then you do business, it's 10 times easier. What are some of the things you like to invest in? Uh, when we're talking about deposits, uh, what are some of the other areas beyond social media? So are you a real estate guy? Are you a stock guy? What, what I, I, don't, do you like? I don't do stocks. You don't I don't, do stocks? Okay. I don't do things that I don't like to control. Yeah, I, I okay. can't control fair. it. Yeah, right? So fair. stocks, I, I, don't do, uh, I don't do crypto. Because yep, no, I, okay. I don't do crypto. Yeah. A real estate I like is I can touch it. I can it, touch it. It's yeah. tangible. Cash flow. Yeah, especially I think because of I'm in digital marketing, it's very intangible. So in, when it comes to asset class, I like something that's you wanna, you want that's, something that's tangible. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot. I should a lot of my investments. When I look at any investments, compared to my businesses, the return that I get from in reinvesting back in my businesses, it just so much greater. It's just so much greater when yeah. I can do something that I can scale. So I'm putting a lot of even my my cash, right? I put some aside, put into real estate, but then a lot that I put in back in my business because the growth is just incredible. You're going to be doing this in, in 10 years. Where's Dan Locke? That's a very good question. Uh, people ask me on this question, and that's when I know I'm doing something right. Uh, someone asked me on social media, then if you, you had, if you have 10 times more money today. Yeah. Like, Let's say you have a billion dollars yeah, like in you have cash 10 in times more money. In the, ca in the yeah, bank. Yeah, just, yeah, right now, right? You have yeah. 10 times more money. What would you do, right? I thought about, you know what? I said, probably the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Probably the same thing. And I think that's a mark of a, of a great entrepreneur, is that you're, right. do, you're, you're not doing thing. it for the money. Yeah, yeah. probably the same You've thing. Because I knew, because I do have 10 times more money compared to before. Yeah, and right? I'm so, still doing you know, it. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm still doing, so I'm like, okay, then I, I know this is my path, this is my yeah. purpose, right? And I'm fortunate enough to be able to combine my like purpose, passion, you know, profit all together, mm -hmm. and all the three P's, and, and I'm very grateful to be, to be able to do that. So you ask me 10 years, um, what I'm doing now. Maybe yeah. more, more different things, more adventures, different things, but it still evolves with main thing with what we do. With the book, Unlock It. Yes. Which I love that title, man. Thank I you. mean, you, it's almost like not fair. You, yeah. you, you were like, <laughs> you, you're, you were born to, to have the book. I mean, it's, it's such a good unlock of the secrets of wealth. It's, unlock it's it, It's not yes. fair. Yes. And but, I purpose said unlock it because it means different things for different people. Yes. Some people, maybe it's income. Some people is something else. Some people is confidence. Some people yeah. is their business growth. It can be so, it's a so broad I, I, topic. Yes, it's I'll make it a little bit broader. And it's going to be a great topic to speak on. Yes. And and you're going to go on a tour. Where are you, aren't you going to go to Europe or where are you going to go? With Asia, this? probably Asia. Going to Asia. Uh, with, okay. with 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 talking with uh, an uh, event organizer. But it, oh, we do a whole tour like PR. Yeah. Um, all of that. So. And you do big speaking events. Big speaking events. Yes. Do you like doing speaking? I love. I love the speaking. I don't like the traveling. Okay, so you're so not I'm you don't very love, selective. Yeah, you of, don't love to travel. Yeah, like uh, okay. like some because I still prefer to run my company and do all that. I'm and not be here. like I'm speaker. Like get a pay a speaking fee. That's not really. What, but if there's a, a stage that I feel that I can reach a lot of people, that is the right audience that can make a lot of connections. Absolutely, yeah. can make a difference. I could do that. But I'm not like speaking all the time because yeah. when you're speaking, traveling all the time, how are you gonna run your business? Yeah, that's it true. doesn't doesn't make sense to me. Right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I see some of the, some guys doing it, but it, I, I don't know how long you can do that. No, Sp it's, traveling's no. tough. Tough. No, speaking, I love people like interacting. It's like, fun. That, that's my thing. I, I love that. I can yeah. be on stage for like you know whole day. That doesn't that energize me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I guess we've we've talked about so many different things here. What's what's our time here? Um, I, I guess my my last question for you would mm. be, um, and we've we've already talked about business stuff, significance. Mm. 
Yes. Um, you know, that is at the top of, of, of what you're trying, what you're shooting for. Yeah. Where, where is that impact right now? And, and what do you want, what, what, do you, what do you want to tell our Money Matters audience about the, 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 your quest for significance? Because I, you know, our audience is very often in their 60s and they're really thinking about that, their 70s, they're really thinking about what am I going to do with this money that I, a lot of times, I, I'm never going to spend it. One day, a lot, I see this happen a lot, is, is diligent savers, diligent investors, they're so good at it over time they wake up one day and they're 72 mm -hmm. and they still have a, a fair amount of, they've got a lot of time left, but now that number because of compounding has grown to like, you know what, I, I'm not going to spend it. I might, I'm going to live on maybe the, I'm going to do the, I'll live on the, the income that comes from interest and dividends, but I'm going to be leaving somebody or some entity or some charity a bunch of money or my family a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard. It, it, what, what is your thought on your, legacy with when it comes to money and significance i think for myself and this will sound a bit controversial it's just my own personal perspective yeah. right uh, you've got four kids yeah right? i don't have kids yet right uh one thing i could say i can like t like radio i can say on tv when i have kids i am not leaving my kids a damn penny it's on record period okay? zero it is yeah. the worst thing i could do to them 100%, I know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not leaving them with anything. That's number one. Okay. okay. Um, well, like, like, a, like Warren Buffett is similar to that. The, why, why, why would I? Like, the, why, like, it's not just, that's like the worst thing you can do to a kid. It robs their motivation. It mm -hmm. robs their drive. Yeah. And they become spoiled brats. It's no, it's no good. Mm -hmm. right? It's just not what, 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 what I would do. So that's number one. That's uh, an interesting point. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. But I, I've thought about, like, I have thought about where, they say I have this much money. Say when they passed away, I've thought about setting up a a a a, 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 a some kind of a trust, a trust yeah. right? And then I would say, okay, you know what? If let's say I have, I have a daughter, I have a son, right? This trust is now doing charity work. Mm -hmm. When someday you can make as much as this, then you can be in charge of that trust. Mm, okay. So that challenges them yeah. to get to that point. Yeah. If they may never get to that point, and okay. then when they do get to that point. They don't really need the money they anyway. Don't need it. Now they're qualified to manage the money. Yeah. So I might do something like that. I love that. But my answer to that has actually been more simplistic, but maybe I'm going to upgrade to your philosophy, is that I, the way I look at it is that I feel as though humans are, are adults to some extent get are fully baked by about 30 or 35. Yep. And even though, let's say, there's a pot of money at 35, it's really hard to fake it from 20 to 35, 15 full years yep. to kind of fake it. I'm just waiting to wait, waiting to get the money. So to me, that's kind of been my magic number. Before, yep. if I if I passed away today, mm. my kids don't get anything material until they're at least what I would consider relatively full baked adults. Yes. Because a lot still happens up to 35. Yes. Yes. Um, that that's a controversial number. Some people say it's 25. Some 30. Yep. I don't know what the number is, yep. but but I like yours better. And I will hey, tell you what: when you can make as much as this is producing, then, then you qualify, you qualify to, manage. to manage it. And by the time that I'm going to change my trust today, the, the, per, the next week. person that become, but I love I, that. I will leave my kids two things: okay. my library, okay, okay, and my connections. That's it. Those okay. are the two things. Those are pretty valuable. From from then on, if they're smart, they should be They'll able read to read in the do, library. Yeah. Speaking of the library, what's in the library? What are your top three? Give me, give me top three in library. Ooh. Um, the one thing. The one thing. The one thing. Okay. Um, the surrender experiment. Oh, uh, that, that I have not heard of. Okay. That, that is a spiritual book. The surrender experiment. But when I was experiment. trying to find myself yeah. about surrender, not being attached to, okay. to things like that. The Art of War. Oh, okay, Art of War, that's the, awesome. The Art of yeah, War. That's but awesome. there's actually one business book that almost no one, it's not a business book, but it's The Three Kingdoms. It's like a, a Chinese novel. It's kind okay. of like The Art of War, but it's like a, a fiction story. Think of it, it's almost like the Chinese version of Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Think, okay. think of that. Oh, yeah. It's called okay, The Three okay. Kingdoms. Okay. Uh, that book, it's actually a very good business strategy book. <laughs> Uh, I can't. I can't go until I hear of at least your favorite. You. you I love your article about uh, nine business lessons that you've Bruce, taken Bruce from martial Bruce, arts, yes. Bruce Lee. Give me your favorite Bruce Lee lesson before we go. I would say, 
Let me ask you. Hold on. Mm. Is the Bruce Lee video when he's doing uh, when he's doing ping pong with? No, that's not him. That's not him. Uh, okay. Well, that, okay. So that's that not, is. No, that's that's just an ad. That's not that's not him. Okay. That's not. Him. I didn't think it was. I, no, the no. first the first year I saw that, <laughs> I remember him, thinking no. that is just he is he is the he, and that's no, amazing. No. How and if and for for our audience that is listening, there's a there's this viral video of mm. Bruce Lee and it looks like. He's playing ping pong yes. against two guys, you know, with ripping the it with back, and he's taking nunchucks. Yeah. That's yeah. just totally false. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could talk Bruce Lee like I'm. Okay, a, I'm a give me, fan. give me, give me a Bruce Lee. I would say one, two, one. Just number one, one Bruce Lee. I think I would say. What have you learned from him globally? Oh, there's so much. Uh, I, I think there's a quote that I love, which he said, "It's using no way as the way, and having no limitation as a limitation." Using no, no way, way as the way. Tell, explain that means that he believes in martial art that you learn a certain style, right? I'm, I'm, I learned karate, I learned, I learned jiu-jitsu, I learned boxing, I learned judo, whatever it is. Okay. With his martial philosophy is, you know what? That restricts your, you, you become bound to the style versus why not learn from all style, and that's his philosophy, and then adapt and create what's your own. And that's why he creates his own martial art, JKD, JKD, Chicken Do, right? So, um, Using no way is the way, and having no limitation as a limitation. Completely blank canvas for a. And I'll give you one more. An artist of business. I'll, I'll, I'll like explain. Yeah. And this is yeah. exactly my business philosophy. Yeah. And this is an exact quote from his book. He said, Before I learned the art, a punch is just a punch, a kick is just a kick. After I learned the art, a punch is no longer a punch, a kick is no longer a kick. Now I truly understand the art. A punch is still just a punch. A kick is still just a kick. Tell me, what's the art side of it? I mean, I mean it is an art form, yes. but... Well, I guess uh, martial art is, is not about beating somebody. It's not about know. fighting. No. Like, I mean, you think about uh, 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 in martial art nowadays, if you want to hurt someone, you're more effective with the knife, with a yeah. gun. Okay, yeah. Like, wh why spend 20 years punching a bag on hurt, or hurt someone? It makes no. This makes no sense. Okay. From an investment point of view, right? Return on time investor. Right, right, it makes right. no sense. But through that is, in martial art, there's no ceiling. You, it's a self-discovery process. You are through practicing. You're learning to eliminate your own defect. Mm -hmm. You can work on one thing about like, okay, now I can punch. They say I'm hitting heavy back. I can hit with power, mm -hmm. but can you hit with speed? Mm -hmm. Can you hit with accuracy? How about your timing? How about your distance? Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or, so it's just a, it's a never ending. It's a never ending. Doesn't matter how good you are. And it's an art to continue to and evolve. It, it teaches you to be humble because it doesn't matter how tough you think you are. There's someone can beat you. If you miss half a second, someone stretch you, you're done. Right? It teaches you to be humble. So I apply a lot of that in, in, in business, in, business, in yeah. everything that I do. Right? I, I talk about that's why. It's, so sometimes I get a little bit philosophical when I'm teaching business. And a lot of my students, they know martial art, business, I combine that together. Yeah. Right? And that's... It, well, it's a perfect analogy. It's, I, it, it's the... Um, because anything that we can continue to improve on for a lifetime that's it's right. just like business. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a, it's a never-ending never. game. It yeah. it's teaches you're not competing with anyone, you're competing with yourself. And every day, you got to just be a little bit better. A little bit better. I love that fucking Dan, Dan Locke is going to be a never-ending game. You're not going anywhere for appreciate a long time. It, appreciate we're, it. We're going to be here for a long time. We're, and it. we're going to talk in another year, and, and the numbers are going to double for you. And I, <laughs> I might get it. go from two views to four views oh, no, on my, no, on my no, YouTube. No. So. I'm going to help you with Instagram. I Believe me, you, you can't, I'm gonna help you you with can't Instagram. get any worse. <laughs> All right, man. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being Appreciate here. It. Thank, Thank you.